that. So everybody, welcome back to the Financial Fox the Smart Investing Webinar with uh, Clem Chambers and Zach Mia that is going to join us uh, very soon. So we have a Clem, um, and that's uh, a great moment to talk about crypto preps. It's always a great moment to talk about crypto. And I know you're going to ask me about Shiba Inu. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I got so many people that texting me and say, oh, Steph, is there a good time to buy Shiba? You know, I might go up, I might go to the moon. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it makes me freaking out, really. Well, I've got to tell you, I didn't buy 10 million of them, or it would be 100 billion yeah. of them. It's a very small one. No, I haven't wanted anything to do with this particular coin ever since it started because this is definitely one for the birds. But the whole thing about um, these tokens is it's all about brand. And it's all about momentum. In the same way as if you um, get a uh, old bank book from any country you like, really, it's not money anymore. And it, it probably was quite a lot of money when it was money back in the day, but now it's worthless apart from anybody who wants to collect old worthless bank notes. Yeah. And the value is what a community want to sustain it at. The same way with the dollar or pounds. And, and so, you know, if there's a, and there is a huge community of people that think um, this token is great because I've been watching the actual trading traffic of this now for um, several weeks and it's been the top trading volume traffic token out there. And I've been looking at it going, yeah, right, yeah. And it's exploded because it's got a great brand now. The community has made the brand. The trading volume is massive. And bang, it's uh, arrived. But Clem, when, when the, the dog coin go to the moon, is not the time that the market is too hot? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, is this a top of the market event? And it's certainly a hot market event. It's certainly a boom bubble market event, but bubbles can go, you know, amazingly high, can go beyond all expectations of people that have got, you know, any sort of grounding. I mean, just look at Tesla. Tesla's worth a trillion dollars, and Elon Musk's share of the value of Tesla is equal to Ford and General Motors market cap times two. So it only makes vehicles, and you know, it's worth more than all the other vehicle companies on planet Earth put together. So where's the sense in that? The, the answer is, that's what the market says, because we're in a particular set of circumstances that brings about that valuation. And, you know, it's, it's the way the market is at the moment with all these huge sums of money that have been printed by central banks. And the same goes for crypto. Clem, other question. Is there a good time uh, to look at real estate? That's another question that people are asking. It looks to me we, are, you can, we can apply the same concept of a bubble even there or perhaps not. Well, I mean, the way to look at it is, um, is it cheap or is it not cheap? Do you want to buy expensive? It's going to become more expensive. People are in the UK, for example, and in large parts of the world, are totally addicted to real estate. Absolutely, totally addicted to it. And I'm not, so I'm not the one to say. I mean, I've ended up with a reasonable amount of real estate by accident, and um, I hate it. But, you know, it's a very good hedge against inflation, and that's where um, we are right now. But I think, I mean, most people pile blindly into real estate, and it does nothing but kiss and cuddle them in return. So it's not for me to say it's too expensive, it's gone up too much. I could have said that three years ago, they said that five years ago, they said that 10 years ago, they said that 20 years ago, they could have said that when I was a little kid. But the actual value in real terms has gone up significantly. Now, you might say that the value of real estate hasn't changed at all and that we've actually seen that lots of things drop in price and in value because they can be made a lot cheaper with technology. So that the only real um, value, the only real intrinsic value is land and property, because they're not making any more of it, in a sense that they're not making any more land. Um, so, you know, it, it depends on what you want to do. If you don't want to take risk, then you don't want to take risk. So maybe buying property with uh, a small mortgage, a 40% um, 
you know, mortgage on of, on the hundred percent of the property makes sense. If you reckon the whole world's going to go to hell in the handbasket with inflation, you want to get as big a debt as possible and put it in in, in as much um, real estate as you can because the inflation will destroy the value of the debt and the property will go up even not in real value but will protect. You're basically doing a negative interest rate play. Um, you're doing a carry trade by buying real estate that's not going to go down in value while the value of the money you borrow to buy it is going to collapse. So it depends on your pitch. I, I personally would would take the latter. If I was interested in property, I'd borrow up to the gills and buy as much solid property as possible and, and you know, let inflation do its work. But I don't like property, so I haven't done that. It is interesting because uh, some people are saying that perhaps, the, you know, the, even the UK with this uh, problem about climate change, we might be underwater in uh, 2030. So you buy real estate and then maybe you're going to end up with, uh, you know, I don't know which kind of value. But talking, but talking to my parents in Italy, the value, the, the market, the housing market, it doesn't seem up so much and i really don't understand why okay in the uk is like that but why in italy it's not so easy to kind of buy cheap because you can't get debt yeah that that perhaps is the point yeah i mean debt is what drives um, values of these things if you give students larger quantities of borrowing capacity to buy their courses what happens is the courses go up in value rather courses go up in price because the universities go Hey, here come the customers with a handful of money. We can deal with that. Yeah, and it's the same with property. Hey, three times salary, three and a half times salary, four times salary, five times salary. Right? It was three and a half when I was a youngster. And now it's five times. I don't know. I've lost track. So the houses will go up in relationship to how much you can borrow. And if your interest rates go down and, and the amount you're allowed to borrow goes up, then you will get the prices will just go up, 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 up. Because people buy what they can afford to finance in property, and that's the, the driver of, of, the, of price. And, you know, you put a credit crunch out there, and you said that nobody could have more than 50 LTV and, and the interest rate for 9%, you'd see property prices hard, or probably even worse. But it's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah, but isn't it a scam as well? Well, I mean, financial <laughs> services... As scams? No, surely not. <laughs> no, I think no, but I was. I think the only part which you missed out is that there is a culture in this country of, um, of real estate, and I think that's something that, even if it went down, you know, ninety percent, that culture would still be there. It's like there's a culture for uh, drinking lager rather than drinking wine. I mean, you, you, different countries have different cultures. And, I, I agree. Uh, I said that before you logged in. I said that 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 people, in fact, not just the English, people around the world various cultures are crazy for real estate they just can't get enough of it they don't care what they pay for it as long as they can keep it yeah and you know it is a patient money business if you look at all the very very rich people in the world about 60 percent of them are property make their money from property and it's been a one-way bet it's been a seven percent compounding thing since you know i was a infant. yeah but they made money from property if they put that money into stocks when they were kids they might have made 10 times the amount they made in property, but they say, oh, property is what's made me rich. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, that is the, that's the other thing. Becomes you can get great, great leverage on, on property. And, um, you know, they make it from leverage. And they make yeah, it from yeah I know. If I, if I buy 10 grand of Eurasia shares at half a penny and then our 30p, um, there's not much leverage required at all, is there, really? Well, that's a great trick. That's a great trick. But there's no, there's no, better, leverage than, there's no better leverage than the stock market. There's a very, there's a very, there's a large amount of rich people that make their money in the stock market, for sure. But the 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 cohort of rich people that have made their money from scratch from um, real estate is much larger. So you know, that's just just the numbers yeah. telling you that they've got something to it. But of course, the trend is your friend until the bend in the end. And I mean, you know, a people, a lot of people are saying, as as Zach is really into, um, saying, well, at some point, this is going to come off off the rails. And a woe betide everybody. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, but I don't, I'm not even. I think that's a. It's always a bad thing to do, to do that. To be the the sort of the harb, harbinger of doom and saying, oh, Bitcoin, you know, cryptos are going to go to zero and the real estate is going to go to zero and gold's going to go. Yeah. That doesn't get that doesn't get you anywhere in life. It's I think the, whole, the, bank, the Bank of England that they said that maybe Bitcoin is going to go to zero. Zach. They wanted to, they wanted to go to zero. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, like, they would say that, wouldn't they? I mean, that's the, well, that's the that, perfect that was one. like a, kind of like a a very weird statement from them. If after so many years you haven't actually realized that crypto is going to be there's, there's no difference between crypto is just is um uh, what 
a fiat currency just is just paper crypto. That's all it is. There's no difference between uh, fiat currency in my mind uh, to crypto. The only thing is, you know, you don't have a, a one pound, you know, one Bitcoin note. I mean, there's no difference whatsoever. The only difference, I suppose, the main one is that bankers and central bankers and governments can print as much um, uh, crypt, uh, as, as much uh, uh, fiat as they like. But you know, the stock on the stock market, you can print as many shares as you like. So that nobody's trying to ban the stock market. Yeah, exactly. and that is the point, there, isn't well, it? Ken? I'm, I'm the, stock, the stock market, that. the stock market is 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 a is the old version of of uh, of, of, the, of crypto. I think people have tried to regulate the stock market out of existence in, on many occasions. Yes. and um, so I I think there's there's nothing new under the sun. In but I think I think that if you don't if you, if you don't at least with you know with small caps, I mean literally uh, people can get away with murder. At least with the crypto price, you can sort of see where the prices are, and you know the people getting away with murder there because they just invent a new coin. But you invent, you know, you list a new company on the stock market. There's no difference for me than that. That's that's just like having a, a new coin. There's no difference it, at all. It, it's it's enterprise and entrepreneurship for sure. And you know, it's interesting um, that this the young generation are really the progenitors of, of this crypto move, and they are actually kind of repeating what our older generation would do, but in a slightly more abstract and slightly more gamified and slightly more digital native way. Because when I made my first killing in the market, I went out and bought myself a, a gold watch and it cost 20 grand. And all it did was tell the time. And I could buy that same uh, watch for 15 bucks. And, but you know, I wanted to buy this crazy item, this crazy status item, um, because I, had this wonderful event. And, at, and the kids are doing the same thing with crypto funds, apart from they're 10 times more expensive than my yeah. crazy watch was. And it's the same deal. Hey, look at me, look at me, I, I, I'm so clever. And, and so it's no different from, but, and now you can go on to Christie's and take a look at watches are selling for 100 grand, 200 grand. And it's the same thing. If, what, what's, what's, I've got an Apple watch that sings and dances and talks to me and takes my telephone calls and, measures my heart rate and, and tells me whether I'm perspiring too much. And yet it costs however many hundred dollars. And yet somebody wants $600,000 for a mechanical watch that does a, that nowhere near as good a job. And people pay that money. Um, yeah. So there's no difference from old fogies buying Patek Philippe's and young fogies buying, um, you know, a crypto yeah, exactly. or, or riding a horse or driving a petrol car or uh, driving a Tesla. <laughs> Listen. Well, in a sense, there's a matter of speed and what falls out the back, I think. Is quite <laughs> outside of that, I Zach, I, Zach, I want to go back to last, um, last episode because, uh, um, you know, your guru skills, uh, you know, are coming up and your uh, quantum blockchain went through the roof. So, you well, know. Well, you know, what uh, can I say? I'd, I, luckily, I, I, I'd, actually, I'd actually forgotten about it, which is probably the best, that's actually the best thing to do because if you, if, if somebody puts you on the spot, then you, it comes out of your subconscious mind, not your, you know, pre-planning evil, manip, 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 kind of say manipulative mind. And that was just like, you know, what, what do I like? And it was, there's no time to think. And I just, that's the one I like. And, and that was it. So, uh, and it's I forgot about it as well. Show, that, it, that it did that. Yeah, 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 I think I think um, I, I couldn't one couldn't possibly comment about that, but uh, there we are. Yes. Okay, listen. Let's uh, let's talk more about you know good uh, unicorns and and uh, good, good unicorns. Yes. And there's a certain irony to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Zach, you want to start, and then and then Clem can help us uh, um, with uh, some other good company we should look at. Well, I think you might, I think maybe Clem can go first, so I can at least give myself five seconds to uh, come up with a, a shooting from the hip type. The of, next uh, one. <laughs> let, let, let me draw my my forty five. Um, I, I am am somewhat amazed at BHP, Broken Hill Mock Properties, as they used to be called, big mining company. Now, if you're a believer in the inflation, uh, and I remain so. Although I think I sense that there's a certain amount of panic out there amongst politicians because they're caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. If they don't make inflation, they're going to get fired. If they do make inflation, they're going to wreck their pensions. So that, that's slightly amusing. But let's just say there is going to be inflation for a couple of years. Commodities, can't, you can't cheat commodities. That's why they're commodities. 
if your value of your currency goes down by 10%, they go up by 10% in price. That's what a commodity is. That's why it's called a commodity. Now, Broken Hill, obviously, is a miner, and they make commodities. And they make lots of commodities you like, and are very fashionable ones, the ones that are going to be very fashionable too. And they're pulling themselves off the UK market as, as out of the FTSE 100 to move their listing to Australia, where the valuations for companies like um, BHP are much higher. So basically, it's a move to get off sluggish bargain basement Britain and get onto you know a more zippy market, Asia-facing, quantity-facing market. That should mean that over time, the price should go up significantly because it's going from a dead duck market to a, to a zippy sizzly market. On top of that, they're spinning out their, their oil and they put, they're merging it with Woodside Petroleum, I believe it's Woodside. And um, that normally means that um, those and, and these holders of the XP will be getting this, um, shares in this new entity. And that normally leads after a period of, of consolidation and um, WTF on the market. You know, what's this new company? Don't understand it. Uh, after five or six months, that new combined company would, would get a real kick up the backside and get a nice, you get a nice rise out of that. So you've got BHP moving from dead duck London Stock Exchange to the ASX. So you'd expect a, a nice um, uh, uplift on that. Can, and then can, got I, can, the, I, can I stop you here quickly? Can, I, can I just finish my, my chapter? Okay, it was about... Only a few more thousand words to get. So, because because there's a punchline here. So, not only are you going to get an uplift on BHP, not only are you going to get new shares in this Woodside oil company, which is going to have an uplift too, you're also getting 11% dividend. 11% dividend. That's almost like... That's the base. (laughs) So, anyway, chapter chapter 12. So, Clem, if he's moving to the Australian stock exchange... Do you, do you see there will be an uplift in the price also on the London Stock Exchange? Well, one would drag the other one up because they're going to keep their listing. I think they've got an ADR in the US, maybe not, um, but they, they'll keep this as a secondary listing. Um, and, you know, your primary listing is the one that should drive your price. And it's not it is coming out of the FTSE 100 or has come out of the FTSE 100, and that's why you see that drop um, that you've got there. And so there you go. Where, where's my dividend? Um, well, scroll up to the top again. Go on, scroll up to the top. No, not not Baron or not Boyle. What a name! For oh, sorry. Um, type, the... no, just type in. Oh, no, don't do that. No, go back to that. Go back. Go back. Yeah. I'm not sure why Baron or was oh, there. Type Maybe. BHP. That's the one you were looking at last. I guess. Hit, hit return. Here you go. Scroll down now. All right there. You go. Eleven percent dividend. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll see, and that dick you're seeing in the share price is caused by the fact they're delisting and. Um, coming up FTSE 100 and, you know, probably a little bit of um, sour grapes um, in the UK. But, you know, 11%, I mean, that should be double. I mean, it shouldn't really be paying more than the 5% dividend, even in, in the um, you know, best of worlds. So if you take somewhere like Newmont Mining, which is NEM, um, if you go up there and, and where it says BHP, no, 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 go back, go back. I'm staying financial, okay. Go back. Just type in there, um, oh, get rid of it all, totally clear it out. Back, 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 delete, delete, NEM. Right, new one, yeah, go for that one, yeah. So if you scroll down, and what, what dividend are they paying? Uh, I think you've gone past it. Scroll up a bit, um, it's there somewhere. Where's my dividend? Where's my dividend? There we go, dividend yield, 3.8. So an American miner will be getting a 3.8 dividend. So wow. call it four. Right, so you'd be looking at a 250% uplift on BHP's share price on that rate. So, you know, you've got commodities going up because of inflation. You've got them and shifting gear in onto a more sizzling market. Um, you've got them splitting out their oil into a, into a, a pure play oil company, which, which um, simplifies their um, uh, uh, value and prospect. And it gives you shares in, a, in one with, with a, you know, a good story for our upside on that too. Because that's another commodity that's going up. I'm sure everybody's noticed it's gone up. Um, so, you know, I can't, and it's paying you 11%. <laughs> uh, and I do have a lot of it. So, so Clem, when the inflation is going up and maybe there is going to be hyperinflation, is, it would be sensible to have a portfolio that is... Uh, mainly commodity base? Well, I don't think there's not going to be hyperinflation because they don't need hyperinflation. What they need 
is they need about 50% inflation over the next three or four years. And that's what you'll get. I believe, and Zach will violently disagree, that the central bankers are, are, are totally in control of the money supply. Yeah. And, and they've probably terrified all the, um, all the politicians into realising they can't just keep QEing forever because they will get 15, 20, 25% inflation. But, you know, they've got their, their reporting down. So when they say 5%, it's actually 10 or 11%. And they just need to do this 5 to 11% over the next three years. And GDP to debt ratio will have, will have evened out. So that, that's what the plan is. So you'll get a devaluation of money by a third or more, maybe a bit more. So anything that's 10 now will be 50. Uh, sorry, not 50, will be, will be 15. Yeah. So if you're sat there with your pension and you just sat there get, taking it and spending it, at the end of the process, you'll have a third less of, of buying power. And, you know, that's pretty drastic. Okay. It's the difference between going on holiday to the Seychelles and going on holiday to Brighton. Yeah. I'm not sure about Brighton. It's not really holiday, though. You can't it's even... Put this, well, you can't put the swim costume because it's too windy. And then if you do, you get burned. So You don't, yeah. you, you don't need to put a swim costume on in Brighton, so... Yeah, so how you can someday... <laughs> No, it's a, it's a nudist. It's a nudist. It's a nudist. Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. It's a nudist joke. That's where and it's exactly on. And, it's, and it's, it's very LGBT as well. So it's, it's perfect for people like me. What is LGBT? Oh, well, you're all bit well. You are now fancy. You, you are now fancy. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 always, it's always good winding Steffi okay, up. Okay, really next is. time you explain to me. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, stick with the, with the stock picking and with the ideas because we okay. like that. Go for it. Go on, Let's... ask Zach a question. He's had about 15 minutes of me rapping on about okay. the oh, Go on, Zach. Start, start to Yeah, yeah. Start so my, 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 uh, my, um, my stock of the day is, is actually Deep Verge which I think uh, for two reasons. One, I really like the uh, CEO, Jerry Brandon, is a, a lovely, clever guy, and management deep, is also deep very... Verge. Okay, deep verge. Deep, deep verge, right. Uh, there's many prongs to the business, which is possibly the reason why it's not rated as much as it should, because one of the things about the stock market is if the, if the punter has more than two, well, normally more than one thing to think about, that's too much, but if it has two or three different businesses in a business, uh, they get confused and they just value it at the uh, part of the business, which uh, is the, the, the least good part of the business or the, um, the, the only bit they understand of the business. So uh, this, I think the, the punchline here is that they're involved in uh, monitoring water supplies. And that's obviously very useful now in the COVID sphere. So I think they've got um, deals with China. And basically, I think they're going to corner the market in the sort of early warning systems on COVID in the water supply, which I think is a pretty good thing to do. And that's probably the, they also do sort of skin testing and other things like that. But it's better just here to focus on that. I did think at 20p, the shares had hit the bottom. Uh, there was a good announcement last week and there's another one today. With the, with the water deal. Uh, and so that is my uh, pick. I just think it's it's a nice little, it's a mini conglomerate in the scientific area, but the difference is that most scientific um, companies don't really generate income. And I think this will generate a very good income. So is and that, I, yeah. are they saying that there is COVID in supply? No, well, it, it's one of those things that um, very, you know, governments and others would um, pay Deep Verge to install their um, uh, mon water monitoring um, unit, and then they would be able to give an early warning system on um, whether there's COVID in the water or, any, or anything else, any other pathogens, you know, uh, cocaine or uh, whatever, whatever else goes yeah. around in the uh, hormones, whatever else is in the water. So I think water is actually, um, you know, obviously, you know, there's many commodities in the world, but actually water is probably the actually will turn out to be the most precious. And so in fact, I think it's, a, it's quite a sort of a new age, slightly clever, maybe a bit too early type of thing. But when the penny drops, actually, it's uh, it's water, uh, not oil, let's say, or other things then that, that is important. Yeah. Then this business, I think, will do really well. I think it's much better than all that COP26 uh, crap and all the other things that's going on, because all those things are just uh, an excuse to try and tax us. 
and uh, I don't like that type. I, of thing. I agree on the water. That's also why everybody is now going for oat milk instead of almond milk because almond consume uh, to create almond milk you consume more water. So um, yeah, that's just a bit. Um, yeah, so that's so that's the one. So um, they got the they raised their money uh, recently, so that's out of the way. And uh, I think, as I said, twenty p looks like a, a good base in the shares, and it's a multi pronged business. But it's not it's not the um, it's not the one trick pony that quantum uh, blockchain was. You know, that was obviously just a bet on quantum computing. This is uh, I suppose it's a bet on you know uh, monitoring uh, rather than anything else. So um, a different a different slightly different area. And it's up 10% right now. And yeah. talking of things that are up quite a bit, um, Bitcoin just exploded from 59,061. Ooh, okay, let's, let's look at the creep. Kaboom. Okay, yeah, and the theorem is following up. So if you click on, see where it says chart in the top right-hand corner, Steffi? No, go, 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 to the, go to the top, see the top chart yeah, Bitcoin chart. above it? If you see, a, no, no, don't do that. No, no, no. Go, go back, go back, go back. Right, see where it says filter list. Filter list to the right, to the right, to the right. List. Go to the right. Go to the right. Down uh, a bit. The list. All oh, right, yeah. 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 It's like, it's like the, this is like the golden it. shot, isn't it? Yeah, don't click on it. Don't click on. Oh, that'll do. Well, you said you can see it there. You can see the internet. If you clicked on where it says D for daily, it would give them all those charts in the in the daily chart. But anyway, that's that's Bitcoin. So yeah, it's uh, trying to make a comeback. It's trying not to um, show that as a um, as the top of the market, a double top. It's amazing that when it was down one day, whenever it was down, it went below sixty thousand, and then literally the headlines immediately: Bitcoin crash. What what do we do about Bitcoin now that it's crashed? I mean, who writes that stuff? Journalists who want to get and people to look at their pages. I mean, yeah. interesting, interestingly, I mean, I, mean I, I was writing a lot about Bitcoin before it exploded, saying it's going to explode. And, um, you know, the right headline, you get two million views. And I mean, you know, that's that's happiness, isn't it? But um, it's, it's strange how all these terms have been corrupted over time. So, for example, a crash, which is, and, and still in my mind, anyway, 25% drop, a, a quick 25% drop. That is a crash, or it could be a slow 25% drop. So a crash is 25% or more. And if it's a, a crazy thing, it can drop 75%, can crash 75%, but generally a crash is 25 And then all the bozos in, in um, on TV started to say, well, it's dropped 25%, it is now a bear market, which is like complete insanity because yeah. a bear market is when it starts to fall, not when it, not after it has fallen. Because you're meant to say, well, it's in a bear market. That predicts that the trend is down. That's why it's a bear market. Bull market, that predicts that the trend is going to be up. Not to say it's gone up 25% and therefore it's a bull market. Because then it's happened and you've missed it. Haven't you? So it's, it's, it's crazy. So now a crash is 3%. So, Clem, are we going to see a new high very soon? Well, you know, I think um, one of the things I think people need to have to succeed in investment is to disagree with themselves. So I think that Bitcoin is going to go down to 20,000. But yeah. actually, the market says it's going to go up. And I'm looking at that chart, and I want to draw a down chart. And yeah. I want to draw it going down to the 30,000. But actually, I think it's quite likely it'll whip around from me and go straight to 80,000. Because when I draw a bull chart and a bear chart, because you could just look at that and go, if this, if we're now in a bear, it's going to go here. If it's a bull, it's going to go there. And I think... We should be in a bear. But this is what a bull would say is going to happen. Bang! It does the bull thing. And it keeps doing that. It keeps doing the bull move. And if this is still a, a bull market, it's going to go straight to 80,000. But I, I'm, not, I'm not backing that because, you know, I, it's too dangerous at these levels. And the percentages that are on the upside are too small. But, but Clem, you were saying that last week, that is because there is a crypto form of a crypto uh, uh, institutional form or in crypto yeah yeah but take this for example um something like compound which has had a bit of a sticky patch could go up 80 percent in the next um two or three years easy easy peasy arvi gotchi could double yeah so why would i want to risk a downside on bitcoin of you know 
20, 30, 40%, when I can actually, you know, a punt on a 70 or 80% rise on something like Compound. And if you go to Compound, yeah. you see that they had a little bit of a hiccup. Ooh, yeah, they had a little bit of a hiccup because they, they gave away $80 million to their use space wax. Yeah, now they've tidied that up. So you would naturally imagine them in the overall bull market to go back to 500, easy. Yeah, so that's 200 on top of 300. Thank you very much. I'll take that um, yeah. risk all day long. Why would I want to um, look at a 50 50 of a move to 80,000 on Bitcoin or a move to 30,000 on Bitcoin when it could go either way? Or uh, put Avagotchi up, up there. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I have these. Avagotchi, right? So this is a really exciting metaverse. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So now, Look, look at that chart, isn't that lovely? So if you bought it at, at, at 50 cents, you'd be 400% up already. But I actually bought a ton yesterday on the basis they're coming out of their metaverse. And if you if you go back to their quote, if you if you just go to the quote on them while they're away from the chart. Oh yeah, stop there, stop there, stop there, stop there. Oh, okay, well, we, here we are. No, it's calm down, you wanna go forward again, or back to wherever you went. Where have you come from, return? Are they got you? Yeah, yeah. Right. So you'll see. Stop moving it. Stop. Stop. So the fully diluted market cap of are they got you is 100 million. Yeah. So um, and because they're nearly fully diluted now, 262 million is the maximum they can dilute to, and they've already dipped under 54. So 113 million seems quite spicy, but for a token like this, you would expect you to be sitting at 300 million. And it probably will be sitting at 300 million shortly. So there's a 300% upside. So that's where I think people should play because it's a skill game, finding really good tokens and backing them rather than sitting on a, on a random wall with um, the Bitcoin, which is, you know, um, drives the whole thing. And if you think Bitcoin's going to go up, I've got you, it's going to go up three times for what, any um, $1 you're going to see in Bitcoin. I mean, it, which is going back to Shiba, you know, if you if you believed in that thing, if you were part of that of, of that um, zombie hall that believes that that's the best thing since sliced bread, and you bought that at nothing, you are absolutely singing. You're absolutely singing. I mean, somebody somebody bought eight thousand bucks of it and three years ago, it's now worth two billion. I wish it was me. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, just to, but, but just to go back to that point, that is, it's just the same as buying a new issue penny stock, isn't it? I mean, there's no difference at all, really. Well, there is a difference. I mean, that's the point. I mean, but, yeah, but let's, I'd like to know what the difference is because it's sort yes, of... Yes, I know. Let, let me... Let it's, me it's good. Yeah, it's good. Um, crazy penny stocks, generally speaking, have a story and no business behind them. Whereas um, these tokens, 90% of them have no business behind them and they're just stories. But 10% of them are going to change the world. And you can't really say that about um, penny stocks because they all go to zero generally. And well, maybe one in a thousand um, is a decent company. Maybe you could say 10 in 100 become reasonable companies. 10, 10 in 100 of these businesses here are going to absolutely rock the world. So you've got that you think it's that You think it's that much? You think, you do think there's a difference? Because it's like, isn't it like the, the it's almost like the, whatever that bell distribution curve or anything else, how could the ratio be better here than it would be uh, on the stock market or anywhere? Well, because, because A... Um, it's, like, it's like setting up a new restaurant. I mean, why, it, whether it's online or it's here or there, I mean, doesn't or where it well, is, it's not... There, there, are, there are some very important systemic differences. Here, um, Bill Gates can float his company at a value of 100 grand and become Microsoft worth 100 billion. There's no benchmark that you have to get over to get listed, to start the game, to raise money. You don't have to get through the regulator. You don't have to do these documents. You don't have to get crushed by the regulators. You can just, you know, JDFI, just blame and do it. Yeah, so you can, Tesla was never a penny stock. It was worth, you know, many, 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 many millions the moment it came out onto the market. Here, a Tesla could come out um, out of nowhere. You know, a Musk, the next Musk, well, uh, look at Vitaly Buttery, right? He didn't set out up um, Ethereum um, with any capital. He came out, got a group of people together. The, the market loved him, gave him 700 million and Ethereum. Or, 
out of nothing. You, there, there's no um, entropy here. There's no there's no grind. There's no grit in, the, in, in your in, in your engine. It's pure business at the speed of light, which is what Bill Gates talked about 25 years ago. That never occurred because in, in the real world, outside of crypto. Everybody's trying to slow you down. Everybody's trying to take a piece of you. Everyone's. Well, that is. I mean, that is the case between regulators, lawyers, um, you know, the the HR and all the other things that there are in the world. You're completely ruined. Yeah. Just think about how it costs to list a company. I mean, you have to pay advisors so much. Where here, yes, you have to pay team members. Some they actually take <laughs> tokens. No, uh, I, I I could I could go out tomorrow and start a project. And have it listed um, for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I could be. And, and if I um, want to build something great, and and OPC is building projects. Yeah. yeah? Um. You know, I don't need. You don't need the capital. You can move at speed. Now, of course, every criminal can also do the same. So you get a huge part of poo and a few absolute diamonds. And so that's where the skill game comes. Are you, also, are you also saying that the, the people who enter this arena are of a better quality and also have less barriers on them than somebody who, if I float something on A, for instance? Well, for a start, the people actually doing stuff are some of the best, smartest, cleverest coders on planet Earth. You know, the coding party um, that goes on in the world is actually in crypto. All the smartest programs. All right. So, so the barrier to the barrier to entry is actually is so high that only the you know the best you know the best by definition only the best can go through. The barrier of entry, if you are a great programmer, is zero. If you if you want to start a software house and you're a great programmer, the barrier of entry is millions of dollars. That's what VCs spend their life doing finding great programmers and 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 basically you know putting them in in chains and with venture capital money to try to make something that's worth a billion to make these unicorns right yeah. well so you, so, yeah, but the other, so, yeah but that's like saying you can't that's why you can't have a short person in the Harlem Globetrotters I mean that there can only be people who are above six foot six or something like that and here you can only have people who are have a certain level of talent or IQ or well, ability or whatever well, they not have. Because like, just like in the penny stock business, for every one good business, for every one business with a hope, for every one business actually grinding out um, their business model, there are nine promoters singing the praises of stocks where people are not doing anything. They're just trying to um, issue paper for your cash. Yeah, exactly. And, and But the actual entropy for talent to get going is is very, very, very low. And the actual um, opportunity is vast because this is revolutionary new technology. This is 1975 all over again. This is um, for computing. This is um, 1997 for the internet. This is, this is a, a launch pad for technology that is world changing. So, 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 whenever, so when everything, anything new happens, you get these uh the early players who you know it's like even like in music you know the first you know the first rock bands or the first uh, punk uh, you know people or whatever a new a new style or a new a new phase creates uh, a first mover advantage and a, a massive opportunity is it is for absolute for, for sure and and the thing is about crypto it's not just about cryptocurrencies so cryptocurrencies then along came DeFi, which is financial services using crypto and blockchain and then nft came along uh, which is basically a a way of putting um, digital assets and having a key at the safe for digital assets and that's becoming massive but that's just the beginning there's going to be now there's the metaverse I mean, exactly that, 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 and then there will be the dow there will be the next well the dow will be the next but there will also be other things that no one's even well they might be doing them but no one's actually defined them as a category that's going to be big that will also come along this is like the industrial revolution for computers. What you're seeing here. So, this is this is this is this is as big as the internet and probably bigger. And this is the early 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 days of it. And if you can split the pack from the con men to the people that are genuine, and you can do that just by looking at the technology. Then you back those the genuine people 
and you know you're you're in an apple on the ground. So, so, so it's like a standard oil situation. So the new railroad, the new oil, like oil did, did that, railroads and all that stuff. So is that kind absolutely, of... absolutely? But it's broad, so it's more like electronics. Can I just add on that when Clem said about back in the right the, the 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 real project? Something that people should be aware in crypto is that many projects they go out there fundraising and getting money from venture capitalists before they actually build something, right? And uh, I mean, I can just bring up an example like by economy that is talking about building bridges where they haven't got anything live on a mainnet. Well, I I, I think I think that, that's probably being a bit unfair to them. But, um, you know, th they're doing what they're doing. And software development is always a nasty business. It always takes much longer. It costs twice as much. And that's how you judge the people to invest in, by their offering that you can see. And when you can go onto their site and click on their product, you are halfway to making a lot of money. Exactly. You're halfway to make a judgment on the quality of their code and their execution. Yeah. I mean, if you've got quality developers and you execute well, you can build a billion dollar organization yeah. from that basis in crypto right now because it, it, it is a gold rush and it's a wild west. And the, 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 the con men, they're the, they're the, they're the moves and shakers, are the real McCoy. And if you can find the real McCoy, that is a lot of money to be made there. And, you know, that's been the case now for several years in crypto, which has gone from something worth 50 million as an industry to 300 million as an industry to now one and a half trillion. And, you know, the stock market in, in North America is worth 25 trillion. So the upside of total market value is, you know, 10, 15, 25 trillion, and perhaps even more because, this is actually replacement technology for, all, for the stock market as well. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, when in the stock market, there is also this, uh, I mean, we are talking about company listener name. Many CEO now, they said, oh, we don't need PR because they spend all their time doing PR themselves. So instead of running the company, they just uh, go, they are on marketing all day and they are not doing anything. That's why they don't need PR because they talk to investor directly instead of running the company. It's which the I American find model. It's yeah, which, which I, yeah, exactly. But then, uh, you know, then what about your business? You know, is, you're going to... Well, that's why you have a COO. You hire a COO. And the well, they can't afford a COO, Clem. They have three that's, that's, they're, they're not, they're not, they're, that's just, they're just promotions, then, aren't they? They're not proper businesses. But if you look at, at big at US companies, the CEO is basically the spokesman for the business. Yeah. And the COO is the guy that, you know, and whips the people who are pulling the oars. Yeah, right. Um, okay, so anything else, Zach, that you want to add to uh, to the table? Then I've got a question for Clem about Ted. No, I'm not going to answer any questions about Ted. Before I forget about it. <laughs> Look, I mean, I, there's there's a lot of, of um, negative PR companies out who go round and get bad PR for the competitors of people. And I think that utterly, utterly sucks. Basically wreckers. And, you know, the wreckers are out for Tether. And they've been out trying to wreck Tether for years now. And I, I, I think the negative PR brigade are evil and wicked. And you can see them, you can see them um, out in force um, with the vaccines. I'm sure there are vaccine companies paying negative PR companies to trash other people's vaccines. Yeah. yeah? And I, I, I think it's one of those evil developments that we're seeing in our society today of, of lies and dissembling. And, and, you know, I think Tether is a victim of negative PR and wreckers. And, um, you know, we see wreckers in, in the stock market. We see people shorten to stall. And, you know, I, I, I think that, those people will burn in hell. If there is a God, they will burn in hell. And it's an evil, terrible thing to do. And anybody that's being a victim of, of negative PR campaigns, these wreckers, I, 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 I feel sorry for them. And I, I think that's, that's a very shameful thing. And, and I, I'm absolutely certain Tether has been attacked by negative PR operations and for a long, long time. And, and um, I wish them the best. They have got the stable coin. They invented it, and and they they invented the whole genre. 
So, uh, you know, why be... Um, so maybe they're only 80% backed by, by liquid assets. Your bank is only 10% backed. Yeah, that's a good so point. So what is the big hairy deal there? So, you know, the day Tether is as backed um, with your deposits as Barclays Bank is backed with, with your deposits is the day that I might go, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, kind of hmm, interesting. But as it is right now, you know, so what? I just say on that, actually, on that point, I, there are all these sort of negative uh, <laughs> influences, in, obviously, on the stock market and elsewhere. Um, I do think that, luckily, most people make up their own mind in the end. I think that, you know, I don't, I don't think the people who knock uh, stocks or knock concepts um, are, I mean, obviously, they keep trying and they'll keep saying horrible things about vaccines or whatever they do. But luckily, I think that uh, people can, most people see through them. So I think it's not quite as... Uh, depressing maybe as um, you're you know you're suggesting and actually a lot of the time um, you know you see on, on the stock market the, the companies which are being hit the you know the worst and actually even even the company I mentioned before Deep Verge has been knocked a lot you know personal comments about the CEO and everything else and actually you see that once they get through it they actually probably do um, as well or even better than they would have done without that negative, you know, you get a short squeeze, you get a short squeeze is, is a squeeze effect as well. And um, I, I don't think it's, it's, you know, it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, you know, I think free speech is good in, in that way. And, you know, the truth does out in the end as well. I, I, I don't, I'm, 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 I think it's, yeah. I mean, if you look at companies that are ridiculously overvalued, you could say that they are the victims of, of very good PR, positive PR. So it's a definitely a two, um, you know, two-sided coin, double-edged blade, etc. And um, you know, I, I, but I just think that it's negative PR it, it, companies and campaigns are particularly nasty, vicious, and evil. And um, one shouldn't play into their hands, even though. They make great headlines, which is really how they do it. They just, go to a journalist. How would you like to have a really great negative headline about something horrible that everyone's going to want to read? Well, this could be your lucky day. And, you know, that that's that's all part of this. Well, some might say death spiral that we're getting in the media. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I mean, like ADBFN has had its um, uh, detractors over the years. And part of that was obviously because you had first mover advantage um, you did very well, very quickly. And, you know, there's been so many people come and go in the meantime, but you're still there. And so, uh, you know, who cares about the negative stuff? You know, you know, you know, you know, I've got the scars on my run to show you. <laughs> but anyway, you take my point. That's, yeah, I take uh, the point. I, I, I don't know. But another point. example, another example like KDBFN is online blockchain. It was here when, uh, you know, the dot com boom was there and building online businesses. And then, and now is uh, one of the projects is actually creating some amazing stuff with cross chain transaction, which uh, is the next big things. Because even in the metaverse, claim, if we are thinking that we are going to bring in NFTs, you know, you do need to make this cross chain transaction. You can't think that you build a metaverse that is a side and that's that's where bridges are important. I could I couldn't be more excited. I've yeah, got exactly. a fairly large amount of skin in the, in that particular game, but I also have a social media policy as a director of that company, which says I can't go around yeah. social media picking that sort of stuff up. And and I think that's right. I, I shouldn't. And and I'm and I'm and and I don't. And I I couldn't be more excited about crypto. And funny enough. Where I'm involved with it at ADBFN and OBC, it's it's where my my heart and my creativity lies. You know, I, I, I obviously want to do the most exciting stuff, the most potential stuff for ADBFN and OBC in that zone. And it's like being, you know, it's like being a, a guitarist at Woodstock. I mean, you couldn't, you know, it, it's your it's it's your moment, isn't it? It's 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 my moment. Crypto is just awesome. I mean, our crypto traffic on ADVFN is wonderful. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
So, Clement, have you have you seen a, have you seen a really a big increase since the pandemic? For on, uh, I mean, we saw we saw the um, the, the trade up. I still there. have a social media policy at yeah. I, I I'm not going to big up ADVSN and OBC on these. Yeah. these but but there was there was a very. I think I think that I think they're both wonderful, and I think they're underrated. <laughs> There's another 2,000 stocks out there. Um, no, no, but I, don't, yeah, no, I, I think the, um, you've got that policy, but it's interesting that no, nobody else has that policy, really, do they? You know, well, that, they, you do. Know. they do, but they, but they break their policies. And, you know, at the end of the day, probably one of the reasons why we've been here for all these years is that we like to keep on the, on, in, in, take the way of the light. You know, when we say we're going to do something, we do it. And although it doesn't win you much brownie points in the short term, in the long term, you build up a group of people that you work with that, that trust you. And, you know, that gives you a lot of survivability in the rough and tumble of the world. Well, I, I hope that I, because I, I've been, I, I think I've met you when just at the start of ADBFN. And it's amazing that, wow. you know, over 20 years later, we're uh, still on speaking terms, albeit in this forum. Um, but my hair. I, I'm the same. I've got the same hair as I had then. Uh, uh, but, listen, um, I was a bunny rabbit as well, just said yes. I found them probably or out of university. <laughs> yeah, so so I think there is a, it's, and in fact, all three of us actually, I don't know, it just sounds like a trumpet blowing exercise, but I think all three of us probably had a situation where uh, there'd been some rather dark patches uh, in what we're doing. And people said, like, forget it, what are you doing? You can't write, Zach, uh, all this sort of stuff. You can't speak. I mean, all the things, uh, <laughs> everything. So Steph still can't speak. And, uh, and and so all these things that, you know, that, but you know, you get through it. And I think it's the same with, with anything you do in life, with investment or anything else like that. I mean, it's taken 30 years for me to get a grip on small cap stocks. I don't know why I went into such a difficult area. Um, but you you start seeing you know you start reading and seeing and understanding these things. It might it, maybe a clever person would a cleverer person would take five years or three years or two years. Or some people can do small caps at the age of eighteen or cryptos or whatever it is. So life is very unfair like that. But you know whoever you are, you probably have to keep on keep on trucking. Well, I bought my first small cap when I was seven years old, and it was a company called Metromar. And they had a they had a a a, a mine prospect called Blue Spec, and about um, last that's what year, it was. <laughs> no, last last year I read a, I got an email from from a, a guy in Australia who was doing a mining company that um that said would you be interested in learning about um our mine it's great it's brilliant and it, it's this Blue Spec prospect, and I wrote back to him I said look mate. 40 <laughs> 50 years ago, I was I was being told by my mum and my, my dad about how Blue Spec was going to be this great mine. And you're going to try to sell it to me now, 50 years later, you've got to be kidding me. And he wrote he wrote back to me and he said, yeah, it was a great, it was a great prospect and it was a great gold mine. And we're just going to go through the tailings. And they had 20 ounces a ton and now we're going to get half a gram of, you know, a mountain out of it, but it's still good. So bless him, he actually didn't run or scurry away. He came back that, that to me with a full history of the blue spec mine in the last 50 years. And it still remains a speculative gold mine in Australia for my whole life. Well, that sounds fantastic, Clem. I think I've got to head off to uh, Brighton Beach because, uh, you know, I'm... I'm... <laughs> I miss it, and um, you know, see, see my friends there. See, 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 see all my friends down there. Obviously, Steffi won't be there. I'm not sure if she'll ever be there. But uh, what was the alternative to Brighton? I can't remember. Now. I'm not a nudist. Oh, like the, the sea, 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 Sorry, the Seychelles. It was the Seychelles, wasn't oh, it? The Seychelles, yeah, yeah. yeah no, Brighton's much better. Much I, I've, better. I've, 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 I've the full, I've the full kit. You know, the old Victorian kit. <laughs> I just wore my suit. I, I, I went to Malibu once, so I was actually just wearing the suit because I had, had nothing else. So that was that was at the time of Bay, Baywatch and everything else like that. But uh, I can never get away from my desk and my computer and the markets and ADVFN yeah. and OBC to go to these places. Anyway, thank you very much, folks. Hey, Great, thank you, everyone. a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, I, don't think I, I haven't laughed so much for well since the last show, I think probably. But anyway, there we are. <laughs>